I'm going to introduce you to a brand new psychic, somebody I hadn't heard of before. Her name is Psychic Detective Nella Jones. And anybody out there who knows me understands that I think psychic detectives are probably the lowest of the low, scum of the earth, horrible human beings who prey on not just vulnerable people, but vulnerable people who have missing loved ones. This is a psychic that came up on my YouTube feed, probably because I watch so many videos on psychics and psychic mediums and, and psychic detectives and so on. And so it keeps getting suggested. As probably you're watching this video right now, you were suggested um, this video because of the other content you consume. And hey, welcome. Pull up a chair, help yourself to something in the refrigerator, you know, join the community leave me comments. I love responding to com comments. And if you are so inclined, please give this a like, but you might want to wait and see what I have to say. This time, I am not going to show you a video. I'm going to sum it up for you. I've watched the video, so you guys don't have to. It was broadcast in 1994. It's been rebroadcast multiple times, and it is called Psychic Detective Nella Jones. And it was on my life in 1920, 19, 2023. And it's got 80, 85,000 views. I mean, that's, that's a lot of views for a very short amount of time. People like psychics, people like psychic detectives. They like true crime. I guess that's what's going on. So it's, it was a, the show who was strange, but true. I believe that did this. And um, she came out with a book in 1992, and it was called Nella, A Psychic Eye. Let me show you what that looks like. And that was, you can still get it on Amazon or a books or some other places, apparently. I, I was trying to find a copy for free because <laughs> I really don't want to buy this. Nella, A Psychic Eye, hardcover from 1992. And it tells the true story of Nella as told by Mandy Bryce, Bruce, Mandy Bruce, who from what I understand was a reporter who turned paranormal uh, believer. And it's got five reviews, one, two, three, four, five reviews. It's um, 4.3 out of five. Not much of a bestseller. A couple of people liked it. This person here absolutely didn't like it and says that um, she was an evil old woman and an habitual liar. In 1991, she was humiliated by James Randi. And I'll talk about that briefly whenever in a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some screenshots and I'm going to tell you the story of this documentary that was done on her in 1994. Well, at least it was broadcast in 1994. It's interesting James Randi had her on his show in 1991 and his show was called James Randi, the psychic investigator just absolutely showed that she had no skills whatsoever, but 1992, she gets a book out 1994. She's got a documentary out on her with, probably hundreds of thousands of views by now, maybe a million or more views. I don't know. And it pops up on my YouTube channel. I've never heard of her. And it looks like after 1994, that was kind of the end of her. I, as far as I know, maybe you guys know more than I do. Let me know in the comments if you know more about Nella Jones. So let's go through the, the story in the documentary. And I'm going to just do it with some photos and as I said, I watch these, so you don't necessarily have to, um, but I will put the video in the description of this, of the um, video that you're watching right now, so you can check it out if you want. So this is, here she is, blue eyes and big earrings. This is Nella. Nella lives in London, I believe, or someplace in that area. I don't know the UK that well. I love it there, but I don't know it that well. 
So apparently, according to the story that's told in this documentary, she was a normal housewife, liked, well, did a lot of ironing. And she one day was watching the TV and it's like some retro TV. And she saw um, a case that was happening nearby of a million dollar painting had been stolen out of a museum. And she suddenly got this idea that something might be, um, I don't know, she got this idea. Oop, not that screen, this one. And she went over and she drew this. She grabbed a piece of paper and she drew this and put some X's on it. And she didn't understand what it might mean. She didn't, she didn't get it. She was like, what is this? I don't know. So she calls up the tip line and calls the police who were completely stumped. They had no idea what happened to this very famous um, piece of art. And so she shows up and, or they said, you know, what the heck? We don't know what else to do. So let's go in and uh, find out what's going on. And we'll, we'll take on this woman who had a dream or whatever it is she had. Cause Nella didn't really know what was going on. She just had this uh, vision and she drew this on the paper. So here's the, one of the police officers in this drama drama they they made it into a, like a a drama thing and you can see how the police are completely stumped i mean look at this guy he looks completely stumped they have no leads they don't know anything and then here she is they call her in here she is nella at the rescue and she's outside of this museum and there she is with her piece of paper with her x on it and the other x that's farther away and she's like i don't know what's going on i'm gonna go figure this out and the police look confused and they're just they're there in their suits and they're gonna go chase after whatever it is that nella has to find so here they go off into the field she's following her intuition and off into the fields into this lake that's over here and it's very dramatic you know with her with her um, heels on and all that walking through the, oh, he's not trying to push her in the water. No, he is trying to keep her from falling in. She pulls up her skirt and she steps, takes her shoes off and she steps into the water to discover this piece of metal that was found that was the back of the painting. It had an alarm on the back of the painting and that is in the water. And so she, you know, the police, they're, they're dumb you know they can't find anything they don't have metal detectors or anything like that i mean it's only a million dollar painting that the world is just freaked out about and so here she goes and she goes into the water that you could see was just right outside it's right inside the water i mean like she barely has to get her little toes you know her ankles wet in the mud and that's about it so then she's she's uh <laughs> browsing around and taking them on a using her little map that she drew and she's going down these paths with these beautiful azaleas that's the best part of the whole um, documentary is the garden it looks absolutely amazing i was jealous about how just gorgeous it was it's in full bloom it helps if it's in full bloom whenever you're filming a documentary like this and here she is with the police officer in tow that they don't know what's going on. And she's such a help. Oh my gosh. So she says there's something else. Uh, she's going to find the frame for the picture. So she's going along and she says, here's the path that people took as they were going out to um, leaving the, the, uh, the museum after stealing the painting. And they go down this path and they find, she says that they hid in the bushes right here. And so the police go and they find little broken, like, you know, it looks like somebody has been standing in the bushes or whatever. So, you know, that's evidence, of course, that, that it was there. Well, she she tells them, you know, I see that there's a, the, the frame is over here and the police go, they call the other police because, of course, they're hanging out there. And they say, go look at this place over here because that's, um, because Nella is saying, the psychic is saying that there is a the you're going to find the frame because it's only so big you know and in the grass over in this area and 
darn it if they don't find it in the grass it was just amazing and and you can see how they reenact it and the police officer picks up the frame with his bare hands and you're like cringing because you know there's probably fingerprints on there <laughs> well you know the police aren't so smart right so then it gets it gets really hairy because everybody's all worried about the fact that she must be in on it because we can't believe psychics, right? The police don't use psychics. So they pull her in to Scotland Yard, like that rotary phone. Isn't that great? And there she is. Oh, and there's, oh, there's a special, oh, look at that phone. There's a special phone there and there's a special phone here. <laughs> He's got two rotary phones. This guy is important. One is to uh, the district attorney, maybe Batman or whatever the equivalent is over there in England. I don't know. And a special red binder. I mean, a red binder. You know, this guy's official. Here she is with her pink purse. And they they pull her in and they set her down. They say, tell us what you know, because we know you're involved. Because how else would you have known all this this amazing stuff? So you must have been, you must be guilty. Tell us where the painting is. Okay, so that goes on for a little bit. And what ends up happening then? So she starts saying that um, she's like, of course, I'm, I'm, I really am a psychic and there's no way, you know, um, I would know anything about this. So, you know, I just have these impressions and things and, oh, the, uh, um, the, uh, IRA is involved. They get a, a, a message saying that they're going to burn the painting on a certain day. And she says, no, -uh, they're not going to do that. And so she says, there's, it's in the cemetery. So they go and they look in a cemetery next to this museum and nobody can find it there because the police, you know, they can't find anything without a psyche helping them. And then there was an anonymous call saying or anonymous message saying you'll go to such and such cemetery, which is farther away. And the police officer there, it's really dramatic. He's with this flashlight going around looking at the graves. He's there at night for some strange reason. And he goes, well, maybe they just got the message. I don't know. And it's more dramatic to be in a graveyard with a flashlight at night. Right. So he just goes along and there it is. It is rolled up. He unrolls it for the for the for the camera. Dun, dun, dun. It's a million dollar um, painting of somebody. Anyway, and they're so excited because she solved the case. All right, so Nella supposedly is now called in by the police for all these other things she does uh, because she's so amazing, and. At the end of the documentary they show a couple other things like this picture of her picture this of her sitting in the window she's got her rotary phone also at her london flat or wherever this is and she's there talking on the phone yak 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 because the police can't solve crimes so they call her in for all these other crimes and and she solves them all and how amazing she is it's just it's incredible but um Oh, here's the picture. I'm sorry. It's a little out of order. I hope it's not too hard to follow the story. This is the the letter that said the, oh, it's a Vimir. Oh my gosh. It's going to be burnt on Sunday. So this is the letter that was sent to the police or to the newspaper saying we're going to burn it or something. I don't know. Something happened. Something, 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 something. And she's so amazing. And the police call her in all the time. But they cannot tell people, it can't be official, it can't be official that she's actually helping them solve crimes. And then they send her this, here, I wrote this down, let me see, because they say this in here. Um, this, the police will not confirm that she's helping them, but they sent her a secret letter, but it's so secret, they're showing it in the documentary. And above this, and it was hard to see because they just pan through it really quickly and you, you, they don't show the whole thing. I don't think they show who signed it or anything like that, but you can. it looks like it's got an official seal of this of uh, Scotland Yard or wherever it was. And it says that uh, it's a pleasure to have you at a guest at our senior officer's dining in night. I know that you enjoyed your visit to the Black Museum and hope you enjoyed our company as well. 
You have given a great deal of assistance to the police service over the years, and it has been our pleasure to express our gratitude to you. I know that some police may have seemed skeptical of your abilities in the past. As a group, police officers are trained to be skeptical, but it is a mark of, of abilities that police turn to you for help time and time again. Okay, could there be some random um, police officer out there who thinks that she solved the cases and they go to her for tips and things? Absolutely. The documentary shows too. They had to wait until they retired because they didn't want to, they couldn't speak out and, and talk about how amazing she was while they were on the force or be ridiculed or whatever. But they made it to the TV show, the documentary. Um, she says, um, one of them says that he, on camera, he says, she found clues we couldn't find. I don't know how she did it, but she did it. All righty then. And uh, there was no acknowledgement whatsoever of this crime being by the police or anybody or any of the other ones she supposedly helped out. So, um, you know, I looked online, I tried to find something and I found many people saying this is ridiculous. She didn't help in any way with these other, uh, some, some murder that was going on. I don't know that she, um, she says she helped solve, but there's no other people say she didn't do anything of the sort. So um, there's a lot of eerie music in this in this documentary, which allows you to understand that it's it must be paranormal because if it's got eerie kind of woo music in the background, that that lets you know because we're all conditioned to understand um, the TV, the role of the TV and movies and so on, and they're setting up our emotions for what's going to happen. All right, so that's the story of Psychic Detective um ella nella jones um you know of course there's the book she has the other thing i was going to mention is and i may or may not put this up uh, it's that video it's a video that james randy did for his psychic investigation series that he did in 1991 and he had nella on stage and what he did is he took um, a bunch of objects well he didn't they did and this is a protocol set up between Nella and Randy, and it was agreed to ahead of time. That's really important when they set up these these um, tests. And I was involved in doing this for with another group in Los Angeles for a long time. And setting up the protocol is very difficult because before the way they do it is you have to ask them, what is it you can do that can be tested? And what are the limitations of that? And under what conditions, like, you know, what would be the odds that you would get it right by that, by just chance? You know, what would be, how would we test this ability you say you have? So this is all agreed to. It's signed off on whenever um, the organization I was with uh, did these kinds of paranormal investigations and challenges. So Randy gets her on the stage. I'll put the link to this in the description because it's really, it's really interesting never seen anything like this done now, james randy was a showman absolutely amazing uh, magician and he exposed people and pseudoscience for years the show is 1991 so it is quite hokey and awkward and um, he pulls her up on stage and he says says to her you know this is what we agreed to right and she's like yeah okay so she's got six weapons on all in plastic uh not to be contaminated with each other i guess they agreed to that ahead of time and they're on the table and he's like some of these these objects may be murder weapons or they may not be murder weapons and she's supposed to take the plastic off and hold the object and say what it is um you know, where it was used, if it had been used as a murder weapon or not, and, you know, like there's a hammer, there's like a pickaxe, 
you know, maybe like a ice pick, different things like that. They're on here. I don't know how Randy got a hold of him, but Randy is amazing. Well, he is amazing. He's amazing, Randy. So she, you know, this is happening on a TV show that's like a variety show. There's a lot of things happening. So she has to go really fast. And so she unwraps these things and she says, this was used for a murder. And then on the screen, it flashes. It says, no, this is bought just, you know, yesterday. Um, and then like, she's holding something else, you know? And so she's getting, she's saying how it was used. And if it was a murder weapon, three of them, she got nothing from at all. The other three, she said they were used in a murder, but they weren't, you know, that kind of thing. So Randy's like, so what good are your powers, you know? And she goes, well, well, you know, it's called hand waving, right? Like, this isn't what I agreed to. We had to go so fast. And, you know, that it's always excuses. It's never like, oh, that was completely fair. Exactly as we discussed. I guess I don't have psychic powers. No, I guess not. No, it's, it's never that. So that apparently wasn't the end of her because after 1991, then 1992 comes the book and 1994 is a documentary. And she's here. I am 2023 talking about this woman who's a psychic detective Here's what I wanted to mention, just just because I'm just that kind of person. I wanted to tell you this couple things. You know, it didn't take me very long to find this, but you know, I just did a quick Google, and I found that there's, um, I uh, according to this website, missingpeople.com, UK. Wait, missingpeople.org.uk, that every ninety seconds in the UK somebody goes missing. And I picked out two that were missing before at the time that um, Nella was doing her psychic stuff, solving mysteries and so on. And here's one young man who disappeared at the age of 15 in 1987 from Liverpool, Merseyside. He has not been found yet. Mark Gar Garvey still has not been found. It is 2023, missing in 1987. That's during the time that um nella could have been helping but you know apparently she wasn't interested in this guy here's another one this is ewan bellingham he was 27 when he disappeared from london he's been missing since 1993 not found he's still missing i don't know nella there's some people out there who've been waiting to be found either they're gone somewhere on their own or their memory has been erased and they're wandering around or they're murdered or, you know, you could really help out. These people are still missing. And I'm sure that their families would love to know what happened to him since it's been what, 30 something years. Um, so um, I'm not quite sure when Nella Jones died, but um, she had some time to help actually solve cases instead of doing documentaries on her chasing down uh paintings and stuff you know i don't get it you guys and i i keep saying this what is missing what is missing you're looking at a documentary it looks really good well there's cameras and you know people are recording everything the sound and everything is all scripted out what's missing is this woman has no cases that she has actually solved if she had really solved a case there's no way the police would be hiding her identity. She would be the most power, powerful person in the world if she could actually talk to the dead and communicate with them and solve cases. Maybe the first one, they wouldn't take her seriously. But when the second one got to be, you know, she tried to do the second one and she she actually gave good information and they found the person and the person guilty and so on. She gave really great information, maybe went right to um, the body and wherever it is, or drove up to the door where the person is hiding out. The second one, they're going to take, start taking her seriously. The media is going to eat that alive by the third one. This woman would win her Nobel. I, I promise you, there's no way that this woman wouldn't be the most famous person on earth. She would also be the most protected person on earth. So anybody who says, well, no, the crime people would be really upset. You think she's going to get to stay in that 
in that uh, flat in London with her rotary phone and sitting in the window? Heck no. She's going to be celebrated, taken around, solving crimes. I mean, heck, it'd be like she'd be like the modern Batman of of London. I mean, that would that that rotary phone on that police um, police officer's desk would go right straight to her phone. But she'd be living kind of, you know, well off in a secure location, totally pampered because all her time would be spent solving crimes, ah, preventing crimes as well. I mean, when you start going down this path, it gets ridiculous. I probably sound absolutely ridiculous because everybody says, that's not how psychics work, Susan. No way. This couldn't, could, you're just, a, you're just fantasizing there, Susan. But the truth is, if psychics were able to solve crimes, they would solve crimes and we would know it. And there wouldn't be any missing people. There wouldn't be anybody missing because there's supposed to be thousands of these psychics out there. We would know about Nella much more than my video. So I hope you've hung around till the end. If you would be so kind as to give me a like, if you'd like to subscribe and learn more about the world of mediumship, I'm on a, an adventure. I am learning and I learned from you guys too. I find the world and the psychology of mediumship to be fascinating, though it is extremely um, manipulative to people who are vulnerable. And I take great offense at that, to have people in a vulnerable state have their emotions and their lives and just, you know, being preyed upon. And I mean, that is P-R-E-Y, not P-R-A-Y. This is a, a a crime against people who are in a vulnerable situation. There's always somebody who's willing to take advantage. I don't know what Nella's motivation is. She got a book and she got a documentary out of it. So I think that there, her motivation was to become famous because that's what she was trying to do. She didn't solve any crimes. She just rode that the mirror painting that she supposedly found just she she rode that story as long as she possibly could anyway thank you all for joining me and look out for my next video and hit the little bell so that you know whenever i've uploaded another video thanks all